Hi and welcome to another episode of Essential Lightroom. In this video we're going to take a look at how we can recreate this grunge cityscape effect. We've gone for that sort of post-apocalyptic kind of effect, we desaturate the colours, added some real grain to it and give it a really cool looking effect. So I'll take you step by step through every single adjustment we apply to this image. As always, there's a free preset available to get you started with one single click. The link is in the description below and you can go and download that, install that in Lightroom, click and get started. But as always, stick around, watch the video, I'll show you how to recreate this and I'll show you some additional steps that are not part of that preset to get even cooler looking effects with this image. Okay, so this is the image that we started off with, and as you can see, it's a typical looking cityscape. It's a stock image, so you can download this and obviously use the same image that I use if you want to. Uh, it's overblown in the top left hand corner from where the sunlight's coming in, so it's not a great starting shot. There's some detail left in there, but not an amazing amount. So it's a great candidate for doing what we wanted to do, which is to have that sort of post apocalyptic effect where things like the sky is blowing out. We desaturate things down. So let's take a look step by step how we can do this entire process. So we're going to start off as usual in the develop module, we're going to come up to the basics panel and expand that out and we're going to go through and make some basic alterations to this. So first of all I'm going to deal with the exposure and contrast, I'm not bothered about the colour for the white balance because we're effectively going to strip most of the colour out of it anyway, so if there is a tonal cast to it it's not really a problem, so we'll leave them where they are. We're going to come to the tone, we're just going to take the exposure and we're going to drop that down a little bit just to darken things down, probably about minus 15, minus 20, somewhere around there. That'll do for me, just to get a little bit of contrast, actually a little bit of exposure available to us in the darker areas, just to bring some of that detail back. And then we're going to push the contrast up by about plus 30. Because the aim that we're going for with this particular image, and this kind of effect, is to have that real strong contrast. And you can see we've got quite long shadows in here from where the sun is coming in the top left hand corner. So we're going to accentuate those. The darker area is going to get darker. We're just going to have a really nice sort of high contrast effect to the image. Next up, let's go to the highlights, shadows, whites and blacks. We're going to take the highlights and for this we're going to drop those down to about minus 50. And as you can see, once we do that, we start to get a little bit more detail back in the sky in this example. And we also get some uh, any of the blown out areas, like with the windows and things, we start to pull some of that back. The shadows, we're going to push those up just to open those up a little bit. We're going to flatten those down a bit later on anyway with the tone curve, but we're going to do that for now, just to open those, those shadow areas up a little bit. So about plus 30 should work nice on there. And we'll take the whites and we'll drop those down again. Now, you'll adjust these on the image by image basis based upon the kind of shot you've got. Like I say, we've got this blown out area so we're kind of compensating for that. So we're going to drop the whites down on there and we're going to take the blacks and we're going to do the same on there. We're going to drop them down to about minus 20, 25, somewhere around there, just to make sure we get that, uh, that contrasty look in there. Next up, we're going to jump onto the presence area and we're going to take the clarity and we're going to give this a good old boost because we want that sort of pseudo HDR kind of effect. So we're going to take that up to about plus 70 and you can see that really starts to accentuate the different tones in the image between the shorter shadow areas and the highlight areas. And by doing that, we kind of look like we're desaturating the, the image anyway. So we kind of look like we stripped some of that color out. We're going to take that one step further. We're going to go now to the vibrance and the saturation. We're going to take the vibrance because we're dealing with the warmer tones. We're going to take the vibrance quite a way down, about minus 60, 65, somewhere around there. And you can see that really starts to desaturate the image. That's looking pretty good. And we're going to take the saturation and we're going to drop that down to about minus 30 for any of the other colors that are in there. So let's take that down, minus 30, somewhere around there. That's looking pretty good. So you can see we're almost black and white, but we still have some color in there. And we'll start to compensate for some of that in a moment. So we finished with the basics panel. Let's jump over to the tone curve section. And we're going to do one simple adjustment to this. I want to take the blacks in this and I want to crush those down a little bit. So we're going to add an extra point into the black area. Now, as always, if you're not in the point curve mode, in linear mode, you just simply need to click on this little symbol in the right-hand corner. That will switch between the two different modes. Now, what we're going to do is just add a point in around about there, just to sort of hold those sort of mid-tones and darker areas out right the way to the highlights. We're going to keep those where they are. We don't want to adjust those. We want to take the blacks, and we want to open those up a little bit. We're going to crush those blacks down. So take a look at the dark area, especially up in the sort of right-hand middle section. We start to bring... Oh, I don't want to do that. We start to bring those up by grabbing this bottom left hand corner which is the black point and we're just going to pull those up we're going to end up just 
opening those blocks up and crushing things down a little bit. So let's take that point, make sure I got it what I want. That's looking pretty good. So we've now crushed those down. So let's take a look at before and after. It's subtle, but it flattens the overall image down and gives it a sort of slightly uh, retro kind of feel to it. So that's all we want to do with the tone curve. So let's close that down. Next up, we're going to jump to the HSL tab because we want to go in there and switch over to the saturation block. And I want to deal with the colors in this. I want to make sure that the sort of orangey reds are really standing out in this, but any of the other colors, the blues and the magentas and so on, they're really pulled down. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the red, we're going to boost the red, the orange and the yellow up by about between 20 and 30. So let's just take that up about 20. Yeah, right about there is looking good. Same with the orange, about plus 20. Yeah, that's looking good. And we'll take the yellows up as well to about, about plus 30 as well. We're doing this because we want the oranges and the reds that are in the building to sort of just have a little bit more saturation when all the other colors are lessened. So let's just take the greens and the so remaining ones. Let's pull those down to about minus 50. All of those down to about the same kind of figure because we don't want those colors in the sky and any magentas and purples and so on. Just pull those down, strip those out. So let's just take a look at before and after. Again, pretty subtle, but it is there. So if you want to adjust this even more, you can do. You can see as we start to push these reds up, if you look at the buildings, they'll start to sort of have a little bit more color in there. So again, you know, we can adjust these as we see fit to get what we want. So let's leave it at that. Now we're going to jump down to the split toning section. And all we're going to do with this is we're going to give this the overall toning color that we want. Now, We've got two different colors we're going to work with with this. We want to have a sort of yellowy kind of sepia tint and a bluer tint for the shadows. And then we're going to adjust the balance to get the kind of color that I want. So let's just take the hue and we're going to take this up to around about there, which is going to be sort of overlapping the oranges into the yellows, which like I say is that sort of sepia color. And then we're going to take the saturation up to around about the same, around about 56, around there. Now this is looking a little bit overcooked at the moment, sort of looks like an evening kind of shot, but that's fine. We're going to adjust that in a moment. So let's just jump down now to the shadow area and let's give that some blue tone. So let's just take that up until we get into the sort of the blue kind of color range. Around about 235, somewhere around there. And we can take the saturation and we're going to take that up. I'm going to go crazy with this. About 23, 24, somewhere around there. And you can see that now pulls some blue tone into it. So it kind of balances off the yellowy kind of look. So let's just before pretty cool looking after just brings that sort of warmth apocalyptic kind of feel to it now we're just going to adjust the balance of this because i don't want the yellow to be quite so prominent i want to pull that back down and have more blue in there in the shadow area so let's take that down to about minus 35 somewhere around there that's looking pretty good so you can see that's cooled it right down now so we've got there's before there's after so the sky picks up that sort of sepia tint warm the colors up and we still retain that apocalyptic kind of effect so I'm going to come down to the detail section now and if we just zoom in a little bit you can see it's a little bit blurry a little bit soft so all i'm going to do is i'm going to add some sharpening to this i'm going to punch the sharpening up but i don't want everything to be sharpened so all i'm going to do is i'm going to take the mask in i'm going to hold the alt key down on the keyboard just so i can see what it is i'm going to mask and i'm going to take that pretty high so we're just really sharpening the edges of the image and not the detail inside it so it looks better so before and after so you can see that just brings a little bit of edge sharpness in there which is exactly what i want to do so that's that done. Next, we're going to come down to effects. And in here, I want to put in some grain and I want to put in a little bit of uh, a vignette. So let's just take the vignette. Let's drop that down so we can pull the attention into the image. And now with the grain, we're just going to go and put some, some grain in there. Quite a lot of grain. I want that grunginess in the sky. I want that sort of real degradation of the image as if it was shot on a really high ISO film. So that's looking pretty good. Let's just zoom in a little bit so we can see what we're doing. So we can adjust the size and the roughness to get exactly what we want. So that's the kind of thing that I want. I want that edginess to it all. Maybe a little bit too much. Let's pull that back just a little bit. So there we go. That's kind of where I wanted it to be. So let's just take a look at the before and after. So this is what we started with on the left-hand side, and this is where we are now on the right-hand side. So it has that real grittiness to it. If you want to make this look a little bit more like a sort of uh, a film effect, what you can do is easily come to the crop tool. Just choose that, and we can choose the aspect ratio. So we can come into this, and we can say, let's go for something like a 16 by 9. Click on there, and you can see that allows us to pick the position. So we can just go for this. We don't clip off the tops. Let's take a look at that, and let's just say done. 
So there you can see we've got a much more sort of filmic look to it. And that's all there is to this particular effect. So you can see we've got that real grunginess, that real sort of retro feel to it. But we've also got that kind of apocalyptic color scheme to it. Well, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date. Remember, you can download the free preset for this. It's available in the link description below. So you can download that and click and get a good starting point. And if you've got any comments, questions or feedback on this video, or anything else we cover on the channel, pop those in the comment section below. We read everything you post and try to answer as many questions as possible. Well, until next time, take care.